Hi, I'm Jack Mankin. I'd like to thank you for your purchase of our new training aid, The Perfect Connection. I think you'll find it an excellent tool for training your batters to rotate their forearms and hands equally to produce maximum bat speed. Before we head back to the field where Jack Mankin is going to give you additional principles on using the connector, we wanted to bring you indoors and show you how we install it and set it up with one of our students. Now as you can see, the strap goes over the lead arm, the cups go down near the elbows. Then once you have the connector on, go ahead and grab a bat and get in your normal launch position. Now one of the important things here is that the arm should not be completely stretched out. There should be some flexibility in the back arm and we would suggest sort of wiggling the back arm up and down to make sure there is movement as the player is doing right here. Because what happens if the arms are too stretched out at this point, you will continue to be stretched out throughout the entire swing. And it's also important because the back arm will start to lower before the lead arm initiates and therefore there has to be some flexibility between the arms and the connector. Now once you have a good comfortable fit with the connector, we highly suggest swinging against a heavy practice bag so the bat can be stopped at the point of contact. The connector is generally going to place the arms in the correct position. So what we would suggest is taking a few swings against a heavy bag with the connector on and then take the connector off and swing against a heavy bag trying to duplicate that same feeling. Now you might feel some different things because the connector puts the arms in a different position than you might be used to, especially if you're a backhand dominant hitter or if you're a hitter who does not use a good lead arm pull. Now as you're first beginning to use the connector, one of the first things you should do is really concentrate on a good lead arm pull. And that starts from initiation right here through the lag position here and it will continue to contact. Now if you notice this player, uh, right after we applied the connector we, we gave this instruction and you can actually see that the lead arm is not pulling against the strap. And what that means is the batter is still using primarily the back arm in driving the swing rather than using the lead arm. We actually should see no gap there between the lead arm and that front strap. And in fact, the front strap is designed to allow the lead arm to pull and keep the connector on and fixed. So in this case, we can see that the batter did not use quite enough lead arm pull. So the next swing, we would want to really focus on using more lead arm pull and lead shoulder rotation so that there is a pressure between that lead arm on the connector and the strap. The back arm also has a very important function. And as you, those of you who have the final arc instructional video and the swing analysis DVD, you know we talk about all of the important points that the back arm has in the swing, from the lowering to the side, to the power V position, to the L position at contact. And this video is not the place where we're going to go back and reteach all those mechanics. We refer you back to those videos. But we do want to give you a couple of important tips here. And when you first put on the connector, we would suggest that the back arm be used mostly as a pivot point where it lowers and rotates. And you focus mostly, initially at least, on the lead arm pull. Here the batter is still using a lot of the back arm. So the next couple of swings, what we did with the batter is we tried to focus on allowing the back arm to lower to the power V position here and then have it pivot, have that wrist pivot and then start using a lead arm pull to contact. In the next part of the video, Jack Mankin is going to discuss the role of the back arm in more depth, but what we did with this player is we brought him back away from the bag to try to get him to focus on taking the back arm around in that circular hand path and not directing it in a linear fashion back toward the ball. And so what we had him practice doing here was lowering the elbow and pivoting that elbow and taking it in a circular arc as he's doing right here. And that's something else you can do with the connector is uh, try this sort of a technique here to get the habit and training of taking that back arm in a circular manner and using it as a pivot instead of driving forward. And then even a further advanced technique beyond that is learning to apply top hand torque 
so you always have the opposing forces between the back arm and the lead arm, which is what really generates a powerful swing. Okay, so next we're going to take you back out to the ball field and let Jack Mann can go over some more of the fine points with using the connector and the lead arm and the back arm. And uh, don't expect this to, to happen overnight. It, it's very difficult to change muscle memory. And the connector can put you in generally the right position. Then it's important to take the connector off and try to maintain that correct position. And while we're not going to cover every aspect of the swing in this short presentation, uh, again, the, the two other videos we do have really cover that in depth. And that's the purpose of those videos, is to really show you how to analyze the swing and develop strong rotational mechanics. So now I'm going to send it back to Jack Mankin, and he's going to go over this in more detail with you. Uh, accelerating the forearms correctly uh, is commonly referred to as rotating the triangle. Uh, this means basically that both elbows and forearms are accelerating at the same rate. Uh, however, if, if you're like most batters, you have a tendency to be top-hand dominant. Now by top hand dominant, we mean that you rely too much on the back arm to accelerate the bat. Uh, as we've shown with the three batters in the promo, uh, relying too heavily on the back side to accelerate the bat uh, causes the back elbow to outrun now the advancement of the lead elbow. Uh, now when you're wearing the connector here, uh, this is going to cause both elbows to accelerate at the same rate. Uh, the first principle I want to discuss is the role of the lead arm in the swing. Uh, if you're like uh, most of my students, uh, when you first swing with the connector, you feel a tremendous pressure against this lead arm. Uh, this indicates uh, that your lead arm is just not accelerating correctly. Uh, in fact, it's just being driven around now by the back elbow. Well, that's not what we should feel in a high-level swing. Uh, if we're accelerating that lead arm equally to the back arm, we won't be feeling any pressure. In other words, in a high-level swing, where you're wearing a connector or you're not, uh, there should be no pressure against that arm. It, they should both be rotating equally. Uh, therefore, we must get the lead arm more involved in the swing. I, I think it's important to point out that the top hand has a very important role in the swing, but that role is not to drive the hands forward. Uh, pulling the hands around the swing plane, now that's the role of the lead arm. So here's a good rule to follow. Uh, it is the rotation of this lead shoulder through the lead arm that brings the hands around the swing plane. Now it's important to point out that to provide a, a real good connection though to that lead shoulder, that this lead elbow must remain at a constant angle. Now, starting off with, a, with a, a, a good angle in the arm and then allowing it to extend just lets the, the lead shoulder free wheel. And we really don't, that's a form of disconnection and we really don't transfer that energy from the lead shoulder to the bat. Uh, to get the lead arm more involved in the swing is why we added this strap at the lead arm. Uh, what should happen in a good swing is rather than the lead elbow being driven around now by the back elbow. What we should feel is a strong pull against this strap pulling the hands around. Now when we pull against the strap to accelerate the hands, that'll keep both forearms accelerating at the same rate and keep the distance in between them constant. Uh, now let's discuss that all-important role of the top hand in the swing. Uh, the role of the top hand is to apply torque to cause the bat head to rotate rearward. Uh, now that torque is applied in two ways. And number one, by the rolling of the forearm. In other words, the elbow stays back here and the elbow rotates in this direction, the forearm, excuse me. That's rotating the bat rearward. The second force is the push pull of the hands. As the top hand now rotates rearward, as the thumb of the top hand now is always rotating rearward, the bottom hand, of course, is pulling around in this direction. And those are the two forces of torque that really accelerate the bat. Now I want to point out that uh, when you're really doing this right, you'll actually, as you pull, pull this uh, uh, top hand rearward, you'll feel it actually wanting to stretch out this bottom arm. That means you're not coming inside with the ball because the rule is we never want the top hand to drive either inside or at the bottom hand. The top hand is always applying a rearward force. So once again, I want to stress the point that we never want the top hand to be driving forward. 
In other words, we don't want it to either drive inside the bottom hand or at the bottom hand. Like I said, the, the, it should be applying torque to the bat that is rotating the bat head rearward. In conclusion, I'd like to point out that when we're using the connector correctly, and in other words, that we're rotating the triangle correctly, that you'll find that always that in any good swing, that when the shoulders stop rotating, the bat will be brought to contact, all right? In other words, during that time, as long as those shoulders are rotating from initiation all the way around to contact, we're supplying the energy from all of those major muscles of the legs, torso, all the way up. Now, what we don't want to see is for us to get, I'm going to take the connector off here just for a second, because what we don't want now is for the lead arm to start off boxed or something of this nature and allow the lead shoulder to freewheel open. Because then what will happen, the shoulders will finish rotation, but the bat is still back here. And from that point on, all they've got left to do is push with the arms. And of course, that is not an efficient mechanic. So once again, what you're looking for is where was the bat when the lead shoulder stopped rotating? Was it a contact? That's great. Anything short of that is bat drag. Now that finishes my presentation. I think you follow the principles uh, that I just outlined. You'll find that the connector is an excellent tool for helping batters approach their potential at the plate.